Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I want to bring you an update on Zion Foster. I was waiting for the press conference to come out to be able to give you the update on her case. Uh, they had been searching for her remains in a landfill. And so this also um, helps correlate the search for Quinton if you're following Quinton's case. This um, also helps to kind of understand what all goes into a search of a landfill. So um, Detroit police halt search for Zion Foster's remains in Mecomb County landfill. And, and then it says, I don't know if she is there. I'm gonna play this video really quick and then I'm gonna read the rest of this to you. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. All right, let's start with breaking news in the search for Zion Foster. Detroit police telling Local 4 the painstaking dig for remains at a landfill in Macomb County has come to an end. A missing teenager's cousin says Foster died when they were hanging out and he put her body in a dumpster. That led search crews to the Pine Tree Acres landfill in Lenox Township. Foster's mother tells us police told her they've been unable to find anything linked to her daughter's remains. Police plan to have a news conference next week. Local. Okay, and so it just goes on to say the search for Zion Foster's remains in Macomb County landfill has concluded and her body has not been found. Foster disappeared on January 4th, 2022. Her cousin, Jalen Brazier, was the last person to see her alive. Brazier, 23, was sentenced to prison in March for lying to authorities about his involvement in Foster's disappearance. He originally denied seeing his cousin at all, only to admit weeks later that he had thrown her body in a dumpster. Brazier said he panicked when he suddenly found his cousin dead, and that's why he took her body to a dumpster. Police were searching a 100 by 100 foot area of pine tree acres landfill in Lenox Township. The landfill is massive. Authorities believe that Foster's body could be buried at least 75 to 100 feet beneath the surface of the landfill. One, Zion is likely deceased, and two, that her remains were placed in a dumpster that was then later transported to a landfill here in Lenox Township. Detroit Police Commander Mike McGinnis said in July, the landfill search was supposed to last eight weeks and it started at the end of May. Quote, I don't know if she is there, said Foster's mom, Sierra Milton. Milton told Local 4 September that by then something would have been uncovered. Police are expected to provide more information regarding the search during a press conference the next week, which it has come out now. So, um, so if you do the math on that, that's this is what I've been um, trying to explain. I talked about it during Quinton's press conference was that um, she went missing in January and they did not begin the search of the landfill till the end of May. So you already have basically six months, but we could say five, whichever, five to six months before they even began the search. So for Quinton's search to begin as quick as it did was remarkably quick. It was quick. It, it really was. Um, and then the fact that it was supposed to last eight weeks, and in fact, it went on from the end of May and then just concluded um, in, oh, I forget the exact date right now, uh, but it was October by the time that it ended up stopping. I just don't remember the exact date. And so it ended up going, I believe it was like four and a half months, I think is what I had come up with. So yeah, quite a long time. Let me take you guys over to this press conference though. Um, this will talk about what goes into a search of a landfill. And um, I believe they, they talk about the money too, it, just how expensive. So you will know how like, how much goes into it in all all aspects of it right but this is specific to her case uh it just gives a really good idea of what law enforcement is up against with searching for quentin 
Uh, I'm going to push play for you right now. Just in case. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us here. We want to update uh, the Operation Zion uh, foster case. Um, I'll bring some highlights to you and then we'll get into the investigation. I'll bring up uh, Sergeant Jones, uh, who has led this operation uh, throughout its inception, uh, who will be able to talk in greater detail about what happened. Uh, and then at the conclusion, uh, I will come back and we can uh, entertain any questions that you may have. In between uh, that, uh, we will hear from Patty Kakula of the Public Safety Foundation uh, about all of those who have contributed to uh, this operation. And we could not be more thankful uh, for our supporters uh, who gave us the help that we needed throughout this uh, process. Uh, I do want to take a moment to allow everyone up here to introduce themselves because I think it's super important. Uh, these are the folks on the ground. These are the folks who, who literally spent uh, their entire summer uh, doing this important work uh, and hoping uh, to uh, bring some closure uh, for this family. Um, and unfortunately, uh, as we will be reporting, uh, things didn't turn out quite the way that we want it, uh, but we'll be able to talk about going forward and, and, and next steps. Uh, so with that, I'd like to start uh, from my left, your right. Uh, sir, if you could just introduce yourself for the media. Michael McGinnis, Commander, Major Crimes. Danny Jones, Sergeant, Missing Persons. Charles Fitzgerald, Assistant Chief, Office of Enforcement Operations. Patrick Cox, Paramedic Victim Monitor EMS. Tracy Fox, Missing Victim Monitor EMS. Marilyn Napper, Department of Public Works, Land Division. Dan DiBardino, Crime Stoppers of Michigan. Daniel Ferguson, Small Company, LLC. Again, thank you all very much. Uh, many, many hours went into this, donations and just hours and hours of work. Uh, Sergeant Jones and the team, uh, again, worked the entire summer, uh, starting with our what we deemed as our phase one, which was May 31st, uh, with the removal of 20 uh, feet of material from the focus area. Uh, at that time, uh, after removing the material and going through the material, uh, searching for evidence, they moved to phase two, which uh, started June 15th. Uh, sections of the search area were removed and placed in a 50 by 50 foot uh, search deck, uh, rake through for evidence and literally rake through uh, each piece of the debris uh, that was there looking for evidence. Phase three, October 3rd through October 9th. And this was the dismantling of the operation and the clearing of the debris uh, using machines uh, continuously uh, searching for ev evidence. And then uh, we concluded with phase four, which is October uh, 10th through 13th. Uh, that's just a high level briefing. At this time, I'm gonna bring up Sergeant Jones, uh, who will talk to you in great detail about uh, the actual search operations. Sergeant Jones. Good afternoon. So from the beginning of this case, January 5th, uh, Ms. Foster was reported missing by her mom at East Point. Uh, the next day on January 6th, the mother also made a report with the Detroit Police Department. Uh, we began investigating along with East Point. And on January 19th, once it was determined um, after interviewing Mr. Brazier, who is the cousin, that Ms. Foster had been placed in a dumpster um, at that point, we began working to track that dumpster. On January 19th, we had contact with waste management um, and we identified the dumpster. We tracked it through the GPS onto which truck and to which landfill, which ultimately led us to Pine Tree Acres. From that day is when we started the preparation to get all the equipment supplies. Um, this pictures here is gonna show the initial staging and setup area uh, where we had approximately 50 people every day when we started on June 15th from the searching. May 31st was when we removed the first 20 feet. Um, June 15th is when we actually started taking the debris from the lower levels that we had obtained and brought it to the search deck. 
we went into phase three. I believe we discussed this already. And then into phase four, you can skip. Next. So this kind of shows you the first phase where we just use the heavy equipment and the area, the original lift area where the truck went is 321 feet by 200 feet. We selected a focus area of 100 by 100, which was identified by where the GPS of the truck took it, by which direction the trash was pushed, is where we came up with our 100 by 100. And this is kind of showing you in phase one, uh, the removal of that top levels that we knew it was material that we would not have to search through. It's another picture of the uh, phase one area. Um, this is where we had set up the tents, which is over by the search decks. So to get to that material, the excavator would take the material, place it into the dump truck. The dump truck would then convey it over to the search decks where we would have it spread out. Uh, we would have a loader there to kind of level it. And that's when our search teams would get up and manually go through all the debris with the rakes um, and try to identify or open any bags or containers that we came across. Every morning at eight o'clock, the searchers would arrive. They have to be suited up. Uh, they were suited up in PPE gear. We made sure that they were all safe with shoes, respirators, uh, the hazmat suits, gloves, and all that. This is a picture showing them on the search deck. So we had two different decks. Each deck would have about 15 to 20 searchers, depending on how many people were able to come out that day. Um, and this is just them going through each piece of debris. Once they clear that, that deck gets cleared and pushed off. Then the next truck comes in and it resets the deck and you start again. During phase two, this is kind of showing you the different depths. So these are pictures from July and August. As we continue to dig down and we start identifying uh, dates on mail, you identify dates that were possibly January 10th. We knew we still had to go deeper. So we would start to go deeper and then you could kind of identify which way the trash was traveling as we went through those sections. We continued down through September, and this is kind of showing through October as we continued the phase two, which was still bringing the material to the search deck area. From there, we began a phase three. Phase three, we did not bring the material to the search deck. We basically had our team at the hole, and we had the machine constantly pulling up debris and as the debris was getting spread off to a side that we had already finished, kind of watching. And if we saw something that wasn't opened, they would go in. Um, so right now they're about 40 feet down in that picture. The excavator is probably 15 feet from the main level. This is kind of a picture of the entire search area. Uh, we had selected 100 by 100. When we were done, we were probably at about 125 by 150, and we had reached depths of uh, 45 to 50 feet. And in that area is where we consistently were identifying the different target dates, which was the December to the beginning of January, when we knew that she would have made it out there. On October 10th, well, the night of October 9th, we shut it down. Um, we stopped searching. And at this point is when we began to clean up our area and uh, remove all of our equipment. During the entire search, um, we searched over 7,500 tons of trash that was physically searched through. That's not including any of the trash that was removed and offloaded. This is a list of the different items that every searcher had to um, be prepared with that we made sure that they had with them before we went up on the search decks. And I think from here, uh, Commander McGinnis. Thank you, Sergeant Jones. 
Um, what Sergeant Jones didn't convey, and I would like to, is how physically strenuous this work was for these volunteers. Uh, they're dealing with the heat of the summer, uh, wearing PPE equipment, raking through very heavy debris with odor. Uh, so I commend them. And personally, I'm just very proud to have been a part of the attempt to recover Zion. Um, and, it, and it goes without saying how sad it is a day for Zion's family that we were not successful in our attempt. Uh, however, that does not take away from the investigative work that's been done, uh, was being done back here at our headquarters while this operation was going on at the landfill um, to try to uh, provide the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office with anything and everything they need when they evaluate this information. So uh, as you all know, the, the warrant request was submitted back in January and it is currently under review by the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, we've met with them as recent as last week and discussed the updates on the case. And we continue to do some follow-up work uh, at their request as well as, as at the request of or the direction of the information coming in. Uh, we plan on meeting with them again in two weeks and uh, we are doing everything we can to provide them everything they need in making their charging decision. Uh, the suspect in this case is still in custody. He's in custody on charges that are not related to uh, our investigation and he will remain in custody for a minimum until December of 2023. Um, so we, uh, we feel very strongly with our case. We have uh, the evidence we've gained from January to now just continues to support uh, our, the information and the, the evidence that we already briefed on. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, Patty from the Public Safety Foundation will speak. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm Patty Kakula, and since Chief White asked the foundation and myself to assist with costs for this operation, um, we've worked tirelessly with so many partners, especially the Homicide Division and Detective, excuse me, Sergeant Shannon Jones, uh, and countless corporations in our community here in Macomb County as well. Um, also, uh, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle is there anytime I needed him to go on television to try and ask for donations as well. Uh, DPD Media was tremendous every time we needed help and letting people know where to donate. And a lot of the contributions came from all of that media. And we thank all of you for helping us get the word out for that. Um, the response has been really amazing. And I think you can see here from the list of uh, major Albert donors, um, you know, the cash was 49,000 and that's a combination coming from our bank account as well as the DAC foundation and $7,000 and uh, just random internet donations to our website. Uh, In-kind contributions, you can see the uh, corporations that have donated uh, their time, their effort, their resources. Uh, Salvation Army was uh, just tremendous being out there every day. And, you know, look at the, the big numbers there. Uh, the hero, of course, is DTE with $310,000. And I really want to thank, thank the, I always come through with all their equipment and their PPE and everything that we need. Um, but you can see the whole list there with the Damo and uh, Blaze Construction, AIS, MyCat, Myers, uh, Moss, we'll hear from Mr. Ferguson in a minute. Uh, UC College, Little Caesars, Salvation Army, and the many departments in the city of Detroit and the many officers that have uh, helped us reach out to people as well. Um, I do like, like to ask if I could now, uh, Daniel Ferguson, who is a, a business person in the city of Detroit, came forward and said, I want to help. Um, Mr. Ferguson, would you come by? Introduce yourself and tell why you're here. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Ferguson. I represent Moss Company, and we provided an excavator to help with the search. And over the years, we've provided numerous equipment and time and material with Motor City Makeover and other things over the years to help with searching for bodies and also clean up, help cleaning up the city. So anytime the city needs some help, my company, myself, my family, we'll step up to the table and be a service to the city anytime. You can always count on us. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's really nice to have so many wonderful philanthropic people in our community. And I just wanna thank all of those who are involved and especially those who are moved to donate to try and help this family uh, have some comfort in finding their daughter. Um, Chief. Thank you, Penny. Um, and again, it, it goes without saying thank you uh, to our homicide unit, 
all of those men and women uh, who volunteered for this detail to spend their summer working at a literal dump site, uh, digging in, in a hole uh, of, of debris, as you saw, uh, looking for this young lady uh, to bring her home to her family. Uh, we made a decision that it was the right thing to do. Uh, we, we put every possible effort we could into doing so. And as Sergeant indicated, who, she's very humble uh, and, and modest, but uh, she drove this project, worked long hours, wanted more hours, stayed uh, on duty for extensive hours in that hot suit uh, and showing up at a dump site every single day uh, for six months and, and making, you know, for her efforts showing up the very next day. Uh, and I, I will be uh, acknowledging each and every member of the team uh, at a later date, but I could not be more proud of the men and women of the Detroit Police Department who continuously step up every single day for this community uh, to do the right thing. Uh, and I am just so honored uh, to even have the opportunity to lead people like this, people who give up their summers uh, to look for someone's child who was savagely taken away from them uh, without provocation. Uh, just a very tragic and sad uh, situation. And I ask that all of you uh, keep uh, Zion Foster's family in your prayers. These are tough times uh, and the investigation continues as the commander indicated. So with that, I will take any questions. Do we have any media partners who are here who would like to have questions? Please come to the podium now. Hunter, Detroit News. Uh, first, uh, what was the total cost for the operation? In offset what was being, uh, that was the cost, was there a cost for DPD and DPW and all that? In addition to what was donated, or was it all covered by donations? No, I mean, obviously personnel costs. Um, I didn't, we haven't, we're working on calculating all those out right now. Um, but I'm going to, if you were to add the two numbers together, it's, it's going to be uh, close to a million bucks. And, and uh, the, the, my second question is, could you speak a little bit? I know I went out there and interviewed those guys. They they put their heart and soul into this. Speak a little bit more to that. It's got to be uh, not always happy endings in your position, in your profession, huh? No, it, it, there isn't. Um, but I am in awe of the men and women. Uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about doing something like taking on uh, an endeavor such as this. It's another thing to see it. Uh, and they did it. They did the work. Um, I was not out there this summer. I visited a few times, but they were in the pit that they created. And as the sergeant indicated, towards the end of the dig, uh, you know, for more efficiency, they got down in the pit and, and went through the debris. Uh, it, it's just something I've never seen. Um, you know, when you talk, and I don't want to, you know, sensationalize it, but you saw the, the pictures and being there and looking down in the hole uh, and those who were in the, that pit, uh, will forever have a story to tell. But the ultimate goal was not to to be a hero who did the dig. It was to be a hero to recover uh, this child and bring her home to her mom. And unfortunately, that did not occur. Uh, but I'm confident that our investigators are going to do every possible thing that they can to ensure uh, that what's needed for prosecution is in that investigative report. And hopefully, uh, charges will be, will be administered uh, against the person that we are confident is the suspect. Uh, but to your point, incredible work, um, incredible work. And they, again, will be acknowledged uh, at a later date individually and collectively uh, because it is something um, that uh, you don't see often. Uh, and, I, and I have never seen it in our department. It's the first time we've, we've done anything like this. And all these folks volunteered. And, you know, we had to politely suggest Sergeant Jones go home a few times. Uh, because she was just that committed. And she's not the only one. I mean, Lieutenant Cole and others, um, and I don't want to miss a name, so I'm going to start naming only the ones I remember. I'm going to name them all at, uh, at the right time. But yes, they were all committed. Hi, Chief. Veronica Meadows from Fox 2. Can you give us a little bit of a sense about where your investigation goes from here? Yes, uh, Commander, would you? So uh, we, we continue to follow up on information that we've received. Uh, we, the investigators meet with the prosecutors, they discuss the case, they discuss the evidence, 
And in those discussions, ideas come up about, hey, let's check this, hey, let's check that. And so we run that stuff down. Uh, just like the dig itself, we run down every lead possible in order to give them as much information of, that they, they can, that we possibly can so they can make their decision. Ryan Marshall, News Radio 950. Uh, obviously, Mr. Brazer was charged with lying to the police. With the fact that this dig was unsuccessful, is it possible that maybe this gentleman may have lied about what he did with Zion Foster's body? Sorry. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, we, we, because we were unsuccessful in this recovery does not take away from the evidence that supports that she is there. Uh, the operations at a landfill are such that uh, we knew going into this that it was gonna be very challenging uh, so we did what we could with the resources that we have, but where there's so much information and evidence supporting, uh, that she is there. So no, to answer your question. And then just a follow-up question. Um, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that he is still in custody, but on an unrelated charge. So if there's a possibility that he may not stay in jail after December. No, I, uh, I wouldn't necessarily describe it as unrelated. It just was not a Detroit-led charge. It's a Macomb County charge. It does involve an aspect of this investigation. Um, and he was convicted on that charge and is in the custody of the Michigan Department of Corrections. His earliest release date is December of 2023. Thank you. All right, just also I want to acknowledge the Detroit Fire Department, Commissioner Sims, who's in the back of the room and their support and help with this project as well. Thank you all very much. Thank you. So that was the update. Um, it's unfortunate that they didn't find her remains, but I'm still hopeful that they can get um, some conviction, hopefully, with the evidence that they do have already. And I say the same for Quentin, that the evidence that they do have and they continue to get and collect um, and analyze, that if they don't find his body, will be enough to be able to make an arrest and land a conviction um but uh yeah so i just wanted to give the update for zion and it's also um worth showing you know what what all goes into landfill searches as well but um let's hope that quentin quentin's found i know it's no easy task but i sure hope that it happens I hope that you all have a good day. I will see you guys in my next up upload and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.